Chapter 21, The Right to Bear Arms. Trey had already pulled out our desks together when I got to class the next day. It was time to work on our Bill of Rights project together. Not that I expected him to do any of the actual work. All he did in class was draw pictures. I heaved my swelling backpack up onto my desk with a thunk. Whoa, Trey said. What have you got, like every school book you own in there? Yes. I unzipped my bag and pulled my social studies textbook out from the rest. It hit my desk with another thunk. It's very heavy. Why don't you keep all your books in your locker? Trey asked. I froze. Stupid Amy Ann, stupid. The reason I had all my textbooks stuffed in my backpack was because all the space in my locker was taken up by banned books. But of course I couldn't tell Trey that. I, uh, I hate having to go out to my locker, I lied. But I see you at your locker all the time, Trey said. You're always meeting people there. <coughs> he was on to me. There was no question. He was trying to catch me in a lie, but I wasn't going to fall for it. Can we just get to our project, I said. We missed a whole day because I had to go to the office. I dug in my stuffed backpack for the notes I'd made on the First Amendment. Trey pulled out the sketchbook he carried everywhere. Yeah, what happened? Did you get in trouble with Principal Banana? No, I told him. I looked him in the eyes. Had he expected me to get in trouble? Was he just messing with me? If he was, he was hiding it pretty well. That's good, he said, but I didn't believe him. Here are my notes on the First Amendment, I said. Cool, he said. I drew some pictures. Of what, I asked. More pictures of me as a mills. Trey looked confused. Um, the Bill of Rights for our project? I was stunned. Trey had actually done work on our project. He turned his sketchbook around so I could see. It was a drawing of a man with huge furry arms with claws at the end. I frowned. What's this? I asked. It's the right to bear arms, he said. I rolled my arms. It's bear like carry, not bear like bear, I said. And besides, that's the Second Amendment. We're doing the First Amendment. I know, he said with a little smile. I couldn't help it. It was too funny. It was the first time I'd ever seen Trey smile, and it surprised me. He had a really friendly face under his uncombed blonde hair when he smiled. For a second, I kind of liked him in his funny drawing, which was really pretty good, but then I remembered who he was and what he'd done to me in third grade. What does MM3 mean? I asked. It was written in the bottom corner of the picture. Is that the Roman numerals or something? That's my signature, Trey said. Marvin McBride the third. Marvin McBride? I thought your name was Trey Spencer, I said. Trey is just my nickname. And my mom and dad divorced when I was in kindergarten and they both remarried, he said. McBride is my dad's last name. He's a commercial illustrator. He lives in Atlanta with his new family. My mom married a guy whose last name is Wheeler, but she'd already gone back to using Spencer, which is her maiden name. Oh, I said. I didn't know what else to say to that. Did you do anything on the First Amendment? Yeah, Trey said. He flipped to another page where he'd drawn a picture of people bowing down before a weird looking alien coming out of a UFO. What's this? I asked. They're worshiping an alien, see? The First Amendment says Congress can't make laws about establishing religions, so they're free to worship aliens if they want to. I don't think that's exactly what they're saying. That part is about how the government can't establish one religion and make everybody follow it. Oh, Trey said. He turned his picture around and looked at it. Too bad, I really liked that alien. It works for the other part about religion, I told him, the free exercise clause. That's the one that says the government can't stop you from believing in whatever religion you want. What did you draw for that one? I trade flipped to the next page. In that picture, a bunch of people in Pope hats and robes were lifting weights. Um, I said, I had no idea what I was looking at. The free exercise of religion, Trey said. He smiled shyly again. He knew that the free exercise of religion really meant you could worship whoever you wanted to, however you wanted to, not people in church doing weightlifting, but it was funny. I smiled despite myself. 
I think we better use the UFO picture instead of that one, I told him. Yeah, he said. Oh, I've got another one for freedom of the press. The picture showed a woman pressing the middle of three big buttons. See? Trey said, she's got the freedom to press whichever button she wants. I snorted and caught myself. I did not want to like Trey or his pictures. You know, freedom of the press means you can print anything you want and the government can't tell you not to, right? Trey shrugged. Mine's funnier. Did you do anything for the freedom to assemble? Trey turned the page to a picture of a boy sitting on the floor building with Legos. I closed my eyes and shook my head. I thought about having him assemble a model car, but more people would get the Lego thing, he said. The right to assembly says that we can get together in public and protest stuff if we want, Trey said. I know, I know. I drew a real one for the right to petition. I couldn't think of anything funny for that. His picture of the right to petition showed a clipboard with lots of signatures on it, so there were at least two usable pictures. I ran down my list of the rights protected in the First Amendment. There was only one we hadn't done, the right to free speech. Trey said he had a picture for that one too, and he flipped through a sketchbook looking for it. I expected Trey to have drawn a picture of somebody giving a speech without charging for it, or maybe a speech bubble or the word speech breaking out of jail and going free. Instead, what he showed me was a drawing of a locker with a sign on it that said, Books Banned at Shelbourne Elementary. My locker. I looked up at Trey in surprise. He wasn't smiling this time or even looking at me. He was staring at his hands. He was right though. Making me take down my sign was against the freedom of speech. I hadn't even thought about it that way. But he had drawn it because he agreed with me. But had he drawn it because he agreed with me or disagreed with me? I frowned at the thought. Are you ever gonna tell me why you don't like me? Trey asked. You shouldn't have to ask, I wanted to yell. You should know that your mom is an awful person for banning books and you're an awful person for spying on me and drawing that stupid picture of me last year. Instead, I just grabbed the edges of my chair and stared angrily at my desk. Mr. Vaughn announced that it was time to put away our social studies and get out our vocab books. Okay, well, I'll work on the others and show them to you when I'm done, Trey said, and he dragged his desk back across to the other side of the room.